On May 7, 1945, Germany unconditionally surrendered to the Allies in Reims, France, ending World War II and the Third Reich. Or did it happen on May 9 in Berlin instead? Both are true. Due to warring ideologies, tussles between the Soviet Union and its allies, and the legacy of the First World War, Germany actually surrendered twice. As an Allied victory looked more and more certain in 1944 and 1945, the United States, USSR, France, and the United Kingdom bounced around ideas on the terms of a German surrender. But it was still unclear how the military or political surrender signing would be orchestrated. By the time Adolf Hitler died by suicide in a Berlin bunker on April 30, 1945, and his dictatorship reached a bloody end, Hitler had designated Karl Donitz, a naval admiral and ardent Nazi, as his successor in the event of his death. Donitz was doomed not to rule New Germany, but rather to orchestrate its dissolution. He quickly deputized Alfred Jodl, chief of the operations staff of the Armed Forces High Command, to negotiate the surrender of all German forces with General Dwight D. Eisenhower. On May 7, Jodl signed an unconditional act of military surrender. And a ceasefire that would go into effect at 11.01 p.m. Central European Time on May 8. When Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin heard that Germany had signed an unconditional surrender of all its troops in Reims, he was furious. He argued that since the USSR had sacrificed the most troops and civilians during the war, its most important military commander should accept Germany's surrender rather than the Soviet officer who had witnessed the signing in Reims. Stalin opposed the location of the signing, too, since Berlin had been the capital of the Third Reich. He argued, it should be the site of its surrender. But Stalin's third objection, that Jodl was not Germany's most senior military official, would prove the most convincing to the rest of the Allies, all of whom remembered, how the signing of the armistice that ended World War I, had helped plant the seeds of the next World War. In 1918, as the German Empire had teetered on the brink of defeat, it collapsed and was replaced by a parliamentary republic. Matthias Risberger, the new Secretary of State, had signed the Armistice of Kampen, in which Germany unconditionally surrendered. The surrender came as a shock to most German civilians, who had been told their military was on the verge of victory. As a result, rumors began to circulate that Germany's new, civilian government, and other popular scapegoats, such as Marxists and Jews, had stabbed the military in the back. Gersberger was eventually murdered as a result of the myth, which became a common refrain among the members of the new Nazi party as they consolidated to seize power. On May 8, Key Eitel headed to Karl Schorst, a suburb of Berlin, to sign the document in front of Soviet Marshal George Izukov and a small Allied delegation. But Key Eitel argued a minor point, hoping to add a clause giving his troops a grace period of at least 12 hours to ensure they received their ceasefire orders before facing any penalties for continuing to fight. Zukov ultimately offered Key Eitel a verbal promise but did not grant his request to add a clause. Due to the delay, the document was not executed until after the ceasefire was supposed to begin, and May 9 had already arrived. The Russians celebrate May 9 as Victory Day to this day. The Reims surrender wasn't even reported in the Soviet press until a day afterward, proof according to some observers that the second surrender was a propaganda move orchestrated so Stalin could claim a larger part of the credit for ending the war. In the rest of the world, though, VE Day is celebrated on May 8, the day the ceasefire was officially slated to begin, 